The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of Into the Pit or the Vibes Broadcast Network. The show is intended for mature audiences. Please welcome your host, Coyote Knight. So very privileged to have the one and only Shane Pittman on our show this evening. Good evening, Shane. Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you for having me on the show. Well, I'd like to start off, I mean, no, we're going to get into the Holzer Files, which you're doing right now, but we want to know about you, Mr. Shane, I mean, like where you grew up and, you know, how you got into this and go for it. Cool. So I have been, I'm born and mostly raised in Georgia. I was a military brat, so me and my family have kind of traveled a little, little bit everywhere. I've been everywhere from California all the way on to the East Coast. Um, I am 35 years old, married. I have four kids, two, teen- two teenagers that are driving me absolutely insane right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a, um, I have a 12-year-old and a 6-year-old. So it's, let's see here. I have a 16-year-old, 15, 12, and 6. Two boys, two girls. Mm -hmm. As far as with the paranormal, um, I had experiences, you know, the cliche answer, but it's true. I've had experiences ever since I was young. Uh, It started when I was six years old, Um, had some defining moments before the age of 12. We could probably get into that a little bit later. Um, I have always been a technology buff. I love the latest technology. I've got to have the latest iPhones, the latest technology. I've always been fascinated with that sort of stuff. Whenever I figured out that you can actually test things that were going on around you, especially they were odd occurrences or strange occurrences that happened to you, and you had equipment that you can actually test the atmosphere around you, different things around you, I was all in for that. And ever since then, I my passion just took over, and... Then the opportunity for the Holzer Files came up, and that's how it all came about. Here I am now. So, not only being tortured by the paranormal, you um, you have all these kids, and you must be a glutton for punishment. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I can't catch a break. I cannot catch a break. I love my kids, but oh man, I mean, I, I think I would choose a, a dark basement sometimes and having to deal with them. <laughs> well, all my kids are from. 22 on up to 27 and two grandkids one's four and one's just about to turn nine so yeah I, oh, very cool. I, i'm right there with you man I, yeah you i know you feel my pain huh? <laughs> i don't like having money in my wallet you know <laughs> yeah, apparently. Apparently. Yeah. so <laughs> if you could maybe give us a, one of your experiences everybody would love to hear Okay. Well, a defining one, <clears throat> I've told the story quite a bit, but for those who haven't heard it, uh, whenever I was 12 years old, I back up a little bit. I, I grew up in a really religious household. Mm-hmm. So, you know, anything to do with the paranormal or anything like that was demonic. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how it was looked at yeah. by my parents and by my family. Uh, whenever I was 12 years old, I had a buddy that... Uh, you know, said, hey, you want to spend the night, whatever. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. And he had a Ouija board. And, you know, I was always told those were demonic. And you'd you'd have uh, opening your stuff up. If you ever use one, I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. You know, we messed with this Ouija board that night and nothing happened. I went home the next day. And I was in my room <clears throat> getting ready for bed. I laid down. I, I knew for about probably five or ten minutes into me being in my bed, my closet door was And we had one of those, you know, the, the floor, the carpet. It was The carpet was thicker. So, you know how the door, you open a door and it 
scrapes the bottom and you can see the imprint. It's not like a draft could shut a door or anything like that. Well, five or ten minutes into it, my closet door slammed. Oh, my goodness. And I'm thinking, I had sit, you know, I had siblings, so I was thinking, hey, <clears throat> you know, I'm, somebody's playing a trick on me. So I get up, open the closet door, nobody's in there. So I just thought that was odd. For whatever reason, I leave the closet door open and get back in bed. About five or ten minutes, it slams again. This time I jump up, go into my parents' room, and I'm like, hey, something's up, something's going on. I don't know what it is. Do you guys know? They open the door, look, nothing's in there. They pray over me, you know, say all the stuff, that, you know, pleading the blood and all that stuff that they, that they normally did. Um, then they walk out of the room, and some time went by again. For whatever reason, they leave the closet door open, and it slams again. This time, they run in there, and they're doing every prayer they could. And from that moment, I slept in my parents' room that night. I was 12 years old. I did not want to go back to sleep in there. I didn't want to go in there at all. Um, that was one defining moment for me because I know— you know, if my parents were to get up and, and to freak out like they did, I knew something was up. And it was something I couldn't explain. From there, I had other experiences, but that was a defining one to where I was like, you know, there's something, there's things out there you can't explain, and it just is what it is. And from there, my fascination just grew, and I tried to research and learn more about the paranormal itself. So did you get into the Ghost Hunters TV show? Yeah, I mean, I, I would watch these shows earlier on and, you know, see different methods that people did. But I'm one of those hands-on type of guys. Mm -hmm. So whenever I would hear local stories or local legends or anything like that, I was I, I would get a group together, get some buddies together and say, hey, let's go check this out. And let's, you know, let's see what we can, um, what we can experience or whatever. So I'm one of the hands-on guys. I, I always love watching and learning from people, but I was one of those guys that just went out there and, and did it myself, you know? Well, what part of Georgia are you from? I am in Columbus, Georgia. Columbus. Okay. Columbus. So it's about, what, an hour and a half from Atlanta, not too far away from Fort Benning, uh, probably okay. around, what, 30 minutes away from Fort Benning, something like that. Mm -hmm. So what uh what type of uh cases or stories are, are local there to uh, Columbus, Georgia that you checked out or, or anything local there in Georgia that you might have been able to explore? Well, there's quite a bit. There's uh, this place called Union Springs, Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's probably about an hour and a half away. It's, it's not too far away. <clears throat> and there's a place called Poly Jail. And it was about the story, you know, to try to kind of cut it a little short. It's about a man, uh, his name was Aberdeen Johnson. And it was back in the days when um, segregation was a big deal. You know, all of that was going on in the South. And he was accused of, you know, mistreating, you know, raping a, a white woman. And, and he was falsely accused. But, you know, he was confined to... Hold on one second. Are y'all hearing that? Yeah. I'm, but it's, I'm it's hearing okay. feedback. It's still get you. Just a little bit. Okay. So, uh, anyway, he was confined to this jail. And the woman's family formed a, a lynch mob and came after him while he was still in the jail now. like So the sheriff and everybody was in on this. There's newspaper articles and all of this stuff. And the lynch mob comes after him while he's still in prison. He's terrified. <clears throat> they work out a deal with the sheriff, get him from the jail, and take him two miles east of the jail, tie him up, and they shoot him so many times in the neck that, it, that the newspaper article said that his head was just barely barely hanging on. Oh, no. Very, very sad story. Very sad story. But... Um, his spirit is said to haunt the jail. And we get, 
you know, we took a team in there and got a lot of really interesting um, experiences in there. So that's a local hunt. Uh, the Springer, which is in Columbus, Georgia, the Springer uh, Springer Opera House, that is a local hunt as well. It's been um, been well known around the area. Um, th- those are the, the main two that I would actually say are credible. There's a lot of folklore. Yeah. Those are the the main two that I would say are credible. But those sound those both of those sound like uh, really interesting things that you know people might want to take a look into. It's super legit. Absolutely, absolutely. Those are ones that I would say, yeah, check out. Uh, the other ones, you know, I've, you hear a lot of the stories, but you know, not enough to where I would say, yeah, this is legit. <laughs> Do you know where Smyrna's at? Smyrna, yeah, Smyrna is. I, I don't know if it's. If I'm thinking right, is it on the outskirts of Atlanta? I believe so. My aunt used to live there. It's, yeah, I know. I just, I don't know, just wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's on the outskirts of Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but I lo- I'm, I'm a southern boy. I, lo- I love the south. Uh, it's home. I've been to a lot of different places, and uh, the south is one of the most beautiful places that you can go. We only have like two from Ohio. I relocated to Chattanooga about five years ago. And then uh, when I first started doing comedy, I lived in Atlanta for about a year. And it's like Tennessee and Georgia is some of the best scenery and the best people you'll ever run into, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we only have two seasons here in Georgia, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's, it's hot and then hot as hell. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, we don't have a winter or any, anything like that, but... <laughs> Other than that, it's it's really cool place. Uh, the South is awesome. Yeah, I think we get about a week's worth of winter here in Texas. <laughs> That's more than what we get. Shoot. That's, That's why everybody's much. so pissed off up north because they're stuck inside because it's snow six months a year. <laughs> Cold as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true. So very true. What, what actually led up to you getting onto the show? Well, uh, Alexandra Holzer, uh, I knew her. I got in touch with her probably five years before this show was even a thing. Um, like I said, I love to research as much as possible about, about everything. And I was researching Hans Holzer and how he investigated because it, it fascinates me to see all these different methods that investigators use. And I just wanted to soak up as much information as possible. And I, I was reading what he would call the, the Holzer method, which was he would go into different cases and he would take a trusted transmedium with him. He didn't care about anything else. He didn't care about the technology. You know, he, he wasn't a fan of technology at all. He was all about the human experience. He wanted to take the transmedium in and go. So... I reached out to Alexandra to find out more information about if she knew more about her father's work with the Holzer method and how all of that worked. From there, we corresponded uh, back and forth for quite some time. And we actually held an event down in in Lumpkin, Georgia, called the Hunt with Holzer event. Uh, That was, um, we were at the Beddingfield Inn and the uh, old jail that's down here and we held an event so basically how i got involved with the show i would just say the relationship with alexandra holzer first off then being in the field uh everything just came together it just i don't know it was almost like it was meant to be oh yeah yeah but I'll, I'll be honest with you the first time that they advertised it on television i didn't hear it very well and I thought maybe it was a new Canadian show. I thought it was like the Hoser Files. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of people. Uh, it's it's amazing to me because that a lot of people have heard about the show. Then there's some people that you'll say it, you'll talk about it on radio, and they're like, they'll misspell it. They'll 
Hoser, they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we get that quite a bit. Too. I, s- I said, what they do, bring back Bob and Doug McKenzie or what? <laughs> 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 so, um, what, what is ooh, what in the world? Um, what's been your, your favorite case with them so far? Uh, my favorite case. Hmm. I have quite a few. I would say that the last one that we filmed was really impactful for me because it was dealing with, with a personal case. It was a, a family. Um, what we learned about the devil in Texas case, which was one of the most perplexing cases that Hans Holzer had. And it kind of haunted him up until his death. Uh, just all the circumstances surrounding all of that. We took what we learned from that case, went to help a family in Missouri. And I would say that was that's one of my favorites because we helped a family and kind of gave her the tools needed. Uh, I don't want to say too much if people haven't seen the show yet. But if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check out the latest episode of The Hoser Files to um, see more of what I'm talking about. But we kind of gave her the tools and and things needed to kind of help her in her situation and what she was going through. And, and she had children involved too. So to be able to help with that was a really important, very, very impactful case for all of us. Yeah. When we got into doing the paranormal because we wanted to help people, you know, if, right. if it ended up getting filmed or whatever, that that's awesome. But the whole thing is, is that, that feeling you get when you're actually able to help someone. Right. That, that, that's the end game. I, yeah, we're doing a show. We've done a show and I'm very blessed to be a part of it. But like you said, whenever you can help people that don't have a clear understanding, because we, let's face it, we're always learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, us, We've been in the field for a long time. We're always learning. And I think we always will. Um, there's people that, that are brand new into this and they're terrified because they have no clue what's going on with them. They don't have any tools. They don't know even where to start much like how we were when, you know, things first started happening to us and we first got into the field. So to be able to help those people, I think it, that's number one priority at the end of the day. So do you find that there's a lot of like, I guess jealousy or something amongst the paranormal uh, community because I know I've, I've joined like uh, certain groups on um, on Facebook and there's conversations going on and next thing you know you got some group that thinks that they're better than everybody else nobody else knows what they're doing do y'all do y'all run into that? Uh. Well, you have you have individual people that that will have their viewpoints, <clears throat> and I respect those. I mean, <laughs> if you've seen the show, you've seen me a couple of times run out of a room or get freaked out, you know. And you always have certain ones that will say, "Oh, well, Shane, Shane's just being," you know. I don't want to use the word. I don't know. <laughs> Shane's being a scaredy cat or whatever. Uh, he's he's not a uh, professional, things like that. And so we always have those ones, but I respect their viewpoints because everybody's got an opinion and, you know, I respect it because uh, they care enough to give that feedback, so I'm just going to listen and, and discard the real negative stuff. As far as with the teams and stuff like that, I haven't really, we haven't really gotten too much of that um, at all, which is good. I I mean, I think we all support each other, especially uh, the Travel Channel family. We all support each other. We all got different methods. But at the end of the day, I think if your end game is to advance the research so other people can be helped, no matter what your method is, as long as you're not harming other people and 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 all of that, I think at the end of the day, we're all in this together and different methods are not as long as we're getting results and we're we're going we're trying to advance forward. I think that's the most important. 
You know, one thing I enjoy about this program is we have an interactive chat room, and our, our brother, our buddy uh, Darren, is in this this week. Last week he skipped out on me to watch the Joker. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> but um, he wants to know if you came across a full body apparition, who would you want it to be, and what would you say to him? Wow. That is a very good question. Hmm. Full-bodied apparition of anybody. That's tough. That is tough. I would, you know, honestly, and I, and I'm not just saying it because it's the show. I would, I would say Hans Holzer. And what I would say to, I would ask him. Um, I would say, hey, are you paying attention to me with with the modern equipment that I'm using now? Uh, you, do you have you have a little bit of a better uh, viewpoint uh, on on the equipment that I'm using now to get the results? Because he, like I said before, really did not like equipment being used at all. Um, but Alexandra Holzer herself will tell you that her father has has communicated to her through this modern equipment now. So oh, wow. apparently his viewpoint, apparently his viewpoint has, has changed somewhat. So has she gotten EVPs from him then? She said she's, she's gotten EVPs and, um, uh, his voice coming through spirit box and things like that. Oh, so what, what was the first thing he said? Um, tell Shane not to mess with you with her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. She would have to tell you that. I know that she told me that she's had some um, really personal interaction with him, and that he still comes through to her to this day. Um, but yeah, I mean, she said that she's interacted with him with modern day equipment. So I think his viewpoints changed somewhat. But yeah, if if I had to uh, communicate with a full bodied apparition, I think it'd be him, and to just thank him for the foundation that he that he laid out. Oh, you know? yeah. uh, for us being able to carry on these cases is a really humbling experience, and it's it's um, something that we're all as a team honored to do. Well, you know, during his time, I think it was a little bit more taboo to talk about those kind of things. Nobody really wanted to admit, oh, yes, I saw a ghost because everybody think you're crazy. But since right. I, I guess since Ghost Hunters came out, it just it took off. And now you see paranormal group after paranormal group. And you're, you're almost like a rock star when you tell them, yeah, I'm a paranormal investigator. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's taken off. I mean, the field has advanced really quickly, <laughs> very quickly, and it, and you know you'll see show after show with different methods and and stuff like that. But like I said, I think it's a great thing. I, I you know you'll see bad apples here and there. Mm-hmm. Not saying on TV, but you'll just see them in general. You'll see a lot that are their intention is not to advance anything or to help anybody. It's just to go out there and, and to get scares, you know, and that's at the end of the day, it, you know, it, that's all fine and, and, and fun to do, but you gotta have a, you gotta have a goal and you gotta have a mission, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's when, whenever you're dealing with unexplained like this, it, it's, it's a serious thing. It's not nothing to play around with. It's something you've got to, you got to take seriously. Well, that's one of the reasons why I joined an experienced group when I first got into it, because I wanted to learn and I wanted to know what not to do. And plus, you know, watching the shows, you get some great ideas. Some of it's a a little, I guess, seems cliche. You ask the same questions and do the same things. But we've we learned all all kinds of cool things, uh, like with the REM pod, um, we used it in Seguin in a house that's being remodeled to be an Airbnb. And um, we were getting beeps on it that we had never gotten before. And one of the uh, investigators said, you know what, that sounds like Morse code. So I actually pulled up an app on my phone that you can communicate in Morse code. So you just type out the sentence and it does the beeps and dashes for you. 
and it actually seemed to be talking back and forth. We got it recorded, but it's going so quickly that some people are having a hard time trying to tell what it says, but there are words there. And um, But what's your favorite piece of equipment? I have quite a bit, but I would say, and you'll see me on the show use this a lot, I, I love the uh, the thermal camera, thermal camera that I've got, uh, the setup, um, because a lot of these cases that we've been on, uh, the underlying, the claims were cold spots or it was hotter in this area. And <clears throat> with the camera setup that I have, it's recording and everything to be able to capture all of that stuff in real time, the environmental changes in real time. Is paramount to me and in, in my part of the investigation, because whenever I'm doing the evidence review and looking over the the video and everything else and seeing what was going on during that time, it kind of helps build that case and kind of adds to the validity of a lot of the claims that were going on at the time. So, thermal cameras good. I'm old school. I love the uh, digital recorders, even the old analog recorders. I, I love that. You, you'll get a lot of evidence that way, um, more than you think, because it's picking up on frequencies that you can't hear, uh, with a human ear. So I would say digital recorder, thermal camera. Those are two of my favorites. Um, Nyeli wants to know that whenever you've gone over um, evidence has there been anything that you've come across that you're like oh, I don't even want to listen to this again um, yes I, I believe our season finale episode um, at the Barnstable house I believe that's going to be our season finale episode um, I can't say what it is gotcha. but it, it shook me it shook me and you'll see, you know, hopefully, I don't know, I haven't seen the episode yet, so I don't know what's been <laughs> left in and what's been taken out. But it shook me to my core. It was an EVP um, of a of a little girl's voice, I'll just say that. Oh, wow. But it's, but it's something that shook me, and I'll never forget that. It's, it's something, something that'll make you think twice about why you're doing what you're doing and the implications um, for it. So um, I know I'm being very vague, but I no, can't no, no, say no. too much. No, yeah. that, that's that's understandable. I know you kind of have to, you know, because things haven't been on television yet. You got to be keep it on the hush hush. But um, right, Darren wants to uh, know another. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Uh, another thing, real quick, to elaborate on. Uh, another piece of evidence is one of in our past episode. I think it was our our first episode um, at the Nap House when I with the thermal camera again. Uh, when I caught the the handprint, it was a handprint on a window. What a lot of people don't understand was it was the second story. Okay, the the room that I was in was on the second floor. The handprint was on the outside of the window, and the windows were boarded up. Oh, my goodness. So it was on the outside. So, so, and not just that, but whenever I would slow down the video footage and and watch, you could see the handprint materializing on there. So you could see the cold fingerprints turning hot in real time. Oh, so wow. that was... That was something, after I saw that, I was like, how did I stay in the room as long as I did? Because that was intense. So Darren wants to know if there was a haunted location you you would be interested in buying if you had the chance. Haunted location interested in buying? Man, there's, there's quite a few. You know, this is going to be, this is a, uh, I know this would never happen. But if I could, and there were no restrictions, I would buy the White House. 
Yeah. I would buy the White House um, because there's been claims for years and years and years about different things. Nobody, you know, has ever investigated. That would be if, if I had no restrictions at all. That's what I would do. Um, I know I, you, I'd never be able to have the house, but if there were no restrictions, it'd be the White House, I think. Yeah, well, I can imagine what you'd find in Bill Clinton's room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I think I might skip that. I, I might you just take, <laughs> take this DSI black light in there and then get all the. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah, I don't think. Sports. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. I think I would just skip over that one. And, and here's <laughs> and here's one of the famous uh, cigars. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, another place. Uh, another moist. place. I'd, what'd you say? Pre moistened cigars, of course. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, another place I'd probably buy is uh, if I could with the Amityville house. Oh, okay. that that's very difficult. Um, to get in to investigate they haven't allowed anybody in but that's another one that i i would be on my list now has there ever been an investigation that just totally scared the crap out of you like you just wanted to get out of there and not come back uh, on the show or just in general just in general um uh, It scared me to the point of not coming back. The Poly Jail um, in Union Springs, a local haunt, that one unnerved me because mm. a lot of the stuff that was that was going on. Um, I'm, my brother joined me on on one investigation one night. We were filming, and I've actually got footage of this. <clears throat> My brother doesn't scare easily. He's mm. younger than me, but he doesn't scare easily. And how the jail was built, the iron doors, I mean, they're very heavy. It's not its not something that'll just swing and whatever. They're very heavy. You have to actually use some force to close it. Well, one of the doors, we were doing an EVP session. One of the doors behind him slammed so loud that it rattled all of the cells. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Place. Oh, I saw him, oh yeah, hell. I saw him jump, probably out of his skin. Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen him legitimately afraid. Mm. And uh, so that one unnerved me. I mean, I don't. I'm. I, I would say I'm a. I'm a tough guy to a degree, but I, I would. I would not want to go in there by myself mm. at all. Done. Another part, talking about, you know, being scared and stuff. And, I, you know, I do get startled from time to time. Um, you know, I don't freak out or anything. There's times I, I'd kind of like to step out of certain places. But right. do you think that uh, there are shows on television right now where they kind of over-dramatize that kind of thing? I mean, you don't have to name any names. Well, I've I've seen that. But if you watch if you watch our show, you'll see me quite a bit kind of leave a room uh, abruptly, aka run out of there. <laughs> um, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with it because you know a lot of people will say, "Well, I won't run out of a certain place, right?" Mm -hmm. And and I know some are some are are pretty self controlled. Um. But until you experience that particular experience they're experiencing, it's kind of like, you know, I'm careful when I'm judging somebody now because of the experiences I've had, especially this season. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm always the type of, I'm not going to run out. But I've had some things happen to where it was fight or flight, and I flew, and I flew quick because it was my it was the initial reaction. Now, of course I went back into the location later and finished the job, but I think it's, I think it's kind of important. You got to be careful with it, but I think it's important to have that human element because 
sometimes whenever you're you're being empathetic with, to whatever spirit is there or the situation there, whenever you're allowing your empathy to show through, you're going to have those moments of genuine fear. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're going to have those reactions where you run out. And I, I think it's important sometimes that people see, okay, even those in the field that study this and have studied this for years, um, have reactions like me, you know, like I would, because it, you, they're genuine reactions. Mm-hmm. Now, do some overplay that? You know, I don't want to judge them, but I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty <laughs> sure they do. But I know this season, you know, there were things that shook me. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie about it or try to act tough about it. It's There were times where I was run out. I came back, but there were times I ran out. So. <laughs> I think that makes it more authentic to me because who the hell's really going to see a ghost and be like, oh, well, there's a ghost right there. I mean, <laughs> hi, hi, yep. Mr. Ghost. It's like you're going to eat no matter how much time you've put into it or anything. I mean, that's even like when you have people who are, you know, National Geographic or something, when they, they see an animal, they might have been trying to stalk a tiger and trying to get footage of something that's, you know, about extinct. And then when they see a rhino or a tiger, they're startled or they, they get excited. So to expect you to sit there like, like an insurance adjuster when you just got a reading is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, 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 you know, there were times, and that's why I always stress to, to everybody, even, especially those that are investigating for a long period of time. If you are, if you ever have those moments, always finish the job though, because you're there for a reason, you know, it's okay to have reactions well, make sure that you go back and finish the job. If, if you're there to kind of further research or, or to gather evidence and things like that, finish the job. You know, if you need to get your bearings and all that, that's cool. But always finish the job. Always. Always. But it's okay to have it's, it's okay to have those reactions because, like you said, man, it, it's it's a human experience. Fear is very real and it happens. You know, just. It's how you deal with it after the fact that that kind of shows who you are and what you're all about, you know. Yeah. So, and you use a medium on the show. Yes, Cindy Kaiser. Cindy Kaiser. I, I was I, I was always on the fence with mediums, to be honest with you. Myself. But some of the stuff that I've I've seen because me and Dave were in the production team. Everybody makes sure that she's very limited in her knowledge of what uh, going into these cases, seeing some of the things that, that she has been able to uncover for us that we didn't even know until we did deeper research that we would have um, historians tell us, Oh, it's funny that you would say that not too long ago, we found this piece of evidence out stuff that was not even on record that, she was telling us it changed my whole perspective (laughs) and it's been a real honor to be able to work with Cindy and with Dave and Alexandra and Gabe, our case researcher. I mean, we have, I know this is probably a cliche thing to say, but we really have a great team and I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it and to be working with them. So it's of course you and you've got Dave Schrader Cindy Kaza yep. and a Gay, Gabe, right? Gabe Roth, he is our case researcher. He basically compiles everything and, and lets us know if there's still if there's still uh, things going on with these cases that warrants the investigation, warrants us going out there. And then from there, he gets with Alexandra. Alexandra helps him. Uh, Alexandra Holzer, Hans Holzer's daughter. She helps him and kind of gives insight into what her father was thinking about the case at the time. And she kind of helps us in that regard um, to add to our case. Uh, Dave Schrader, of course, I mean, he's a pioneer in his own right. Um, Paranormal radio and all of the stuff that he's done with Midnight in the Desert and uh, Darkness Radio. And he is... 
phenomenal as far as being the lead investigator. I, I'm glad that he's leading us. He is he is a great leader and um, a really good guy. I notice he's very, very serious when he's talking. So do you all ever try to crack him up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and like I said, they always cut this out. They always <laughs> cut it out like, because you know, because of course, the investigations and the cases they're they're serious and we're there to do a job. But he has got such a great sense of humor that sometimes when we're in scene or right before we're about to uh, film a scene, he'll say something that he knows is going to get me. He knows it's going to get me, and he knows it's going to it's going to tear me down. But he does it anyway. <laughs> but yeah, we we do that to each other quite a bit because you know sometimes we're we're filming fifteen, sixteen hours a day, mm-hmm. and if you don't have those little breaks in between, you will go crazy because it's 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 grueling days. Uh, we love what we do, but it, it's it's long hours. So it, it's good to be able to cut up now and then and, and do that. And, you know, like I said, we're, we're a tight-knit team. Um, we're comfortable doing that with each other, and, and um, we know when the other one needs it. And, you know, so short, short – an- I know that was a longer answer, but short answer is yes, yes. We <laughs> try to, try to uh, you know – lighten each other's day up a little bit you know well i know whenever I got a oh, go ahead for you go ahead, chris go ahead uh, sure. being from georgia and the south uh have you ever investigated any uh civil war sites or anything connected to like the history of the south other than the uh the jail in alabama you know unfortunately no i have not me and my girlfriend we went and checked out a spot it's called the battle of missionary ridge and um before Sherman's March and everything, there were a lot of skirmishes here in Chattanooga. And there's actually a hill with a monument, and they've got uh, different uh, monuments and plaques uh, commemorating the charge up a uh, missionary ridge. And then they've got four cannons that, that are uh, in the same location where they stood when they were uh, taken over. I think it was 1863. And then there's some uh, haunted tours in Chattanooga. And they're just going near those cannons and able, being able to like read the charge charges of the different brigades from the different states i got a real cool energy from there like there was there was still a story to be told from there and then you know the blues started in chattanooga you got the chattanooga choo-choo you got so much of the the migration of north to south and the the maturation of the country here so and then there's chattanooga ghost tour so me and my girlfriend go and kind of check out some spots here locally oh that's very cool yeah i would love i would love to investigate one of those spots just unfortunately i haven't been able to yet we'll be here when you when you get to chattanooga absolutely man i'm down i'm down and austin don't forget us oh no (laughs) never we can't forget you guys can't forget you guys have you been to the driscoll no i have not well we'll have to get you in there you got to come this way and go with us when you're not filming Let's do it. I'm for it. I'm down. <laughs> oh, speaking of Texas, we never got to ask you. So, uh, what was up with Tyler? You got to recently visit Tyler, and um... yeah, so that was the Devil in Texas episode. So that case, Hans Holzer, it haunted him up until his death. Right. Mm. So there was this family for about three years straight that was experiencing severe poltergeist activity um things moving on their own letters and notes materializing out of out of thin air those were the claims um voices coming through telephones lifting up off the receiver by itself being hung upside down whenever you know so it's like somebody was talking on it hung it up always upside down um and there was a teenage boy, Andy Beard, that he believed he was, and his family believed that he was possessed uh, by a demon. So <clears throat> Hans Holzer told the family, well, if you move, you know, it may stop the activity. 
Well, the family moved and it stopped for a while, but then it picked up in intensity in the new place that we're at. And by that time, it was too late. Uh, Andy was older. He was in his 20s at the time. And his sister reached out to Hans Holzer and said, hey, um, my brother, he feels like he's possessed. Um, he just wants the pain to stop. He's hearing voices all the time. Hans Holzer tried to reach out, tried to go back out there. But by that time, Andy did not want help. He, he refused to help. And unfortunately, it ended tragically. He ended up committing suicide. Yeah. And, um, very, very sad case. So we learn more about that when, when we go to Tyler and find out that, you know, unfortunately he had ended his life. But then um, a family reached out to us that had similar things going on in their life and in their, in their household. And she reached out to us, a woman named Lydia. She had uh, two children. And with the things that we learned from the devil in Texas case, we decided to go and see about helping her with the knowledge that we, we had and that we gathered. So that was the last episode. And, and we ended up, you know, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to say too much for those who haven't seen it. Hopefully everybody has seen it by now, but I understand life gets in the way and, you know, maybe not everybody has seen it yet. But we ended up going and, and giving resolution for this family in Missouri. Um, it's a really great case, and it's one of the most emotional and, and impactful ones for our team. Now, well, I know what you can say. Tell us exactly the, uh, you said the Holzer Files is on the Travel Channel. What uh, dates and times is it airing? It is every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Travel Channel. Uh, this Thursday is not a new episode. Uh, it's going to be an encore episode of our Morris Jamel case in uh, New York. But we are back with an all-new episode on November 7th, Thursday, November 7th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Travel Channel. And that was a case, it's called Phantom Crew. We investigate the USS Constellation. Oh, cool. In Baltimore, Maryland. Nice. That one's an awesome case. Like I said, I can't say much, but that one's a good one. You want to tune in for that. But uh, last night's episode was part of Ghost Tober, correct? Right. So Ghost Tober, Ghost Tober ends. It wasn't when was, it wasn't last night. It was uh, Thursdays. Was it Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Um, Ghost Tober ends on the thirty first. Okay. So on Halloween, Ghost Tober ends. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have an episode airing that night. Uh, there's a Halloween special going on that night. Uh, Ghost Adventures has a Halloween special. But like I said, we're back November 7th for an all new episode. Okay, cool. Um, now, if you, can't, if you can't catch it on Travel Channel for whatever reason, let's say you miss it, you can go to travel the Travel Channel app the travel go app and if you have a cable subscription or anything like that you can view our past episodes and our current ones there you can also go to hulu and amazon and our episodes are there as well or do like i do and dvr it so i can skip through all the commercials there you go but hey if you dvr it just if, if you don't mind try watching it but within two to three days mm -hmm. after the air date mm -hmm. because that helps with our ratings. If, if you watch past the three-day mark, it won't count as a view in the same way. So if you do DVR it, I understand, like I said, life gets in the way. I've got a gazillion kids, so I know how it is. But, uh, yeah, if you DVR it, just watch it within two to three days so that way it, it kind of helps us out a lot and we would really Support appreciate the show. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Well, Please, we would really appreciate that. I would love to see it come on another season because I really enjoy it. Well, thank you so much. And, and you know, all, 
everybody that has been watching so far and the feedback has been absolutely amazing. I'm, everybody has been so supportive and I'm just thankful for everybody that's watching and they're receiving it well. Well, like, sure. like you said, you've got a good, good team there. Every, Absolutely. Everybody seems to work together real well. They have a good rapport with each other, and it makes it worth watching. Um, and another quick question. Do you find it more exciting to be able to debunk a lot of things or to actually find the evidence? Because, I mean, I do, I, I do enjoy getting evidence. Don't get me wrong. But there's – there's something that makes you kind of well makes me feel good whenever I can say, Oh, you know what? This is what really is happening. Yeah. I think both of those go hand in hand. Yes. It's exciting because some of the things that you are debunking has terrified people before that time. So that there wasn't an explanation for it. And, it brought a lot of fear and uncertainty to a lot of people that were experiencing whatever was causing that. So whenever we're able to go into a case and to debunk that and say, okay, here's the cause, here's what it is. It's not paranormal in nature. It's this or that. It brings comfort to the people who thought it was something else when it really wasn't. Right. So yeah. I, I think it brings that, integrity too, because it kind of, it shoots down the people to try to say oh those people are just they're all frauds or and i think there's a the, the skeptics almost assume that if someone says that any paranormal claim is true that everybody in the paranormal you know community is going to run and and try to support it you know no matter how valid it is or not and i think it, it gives everybody more validity when people can point out okay this isn't real so then when you find something that's like okay this is something that we can't explain draw your own conclusions it right. shows the people are really sincere and they're not just trying to blow smoke up your ass. It's not carnival barking. Right, right. And and we all know this. and Some people don't, but we know this. Not everything is paranormal. So and even in these cases that we go and do, it's important to show that aspect, that there are things that you can definitely explain away and you can you can close that aspect of it down and say okay no here's the explanation for it but you know on the flip side kyle what you're saying is yeah on the flip side of things i love the evidence portion too what people don't see on these shows is i do my own evidence review so i am pouring over hours and hours of stuff it would it would be quite boring if I if I was unfortunate enough not to ever get evidence. So whenever I do get that evidence, that is extremely exciting for me because sometimes I'm and y'all know y'all know that sometimes listening to audio and all of that you're spending hours listening to nothing until something happens, right? <laughs> same, same same with video. So, I mean, whenever those occurrences happen and there's something I can't explain, it is very, it's an adrenaline rush, for sure. Oh, there's times I just want to rip the headphones off and say, oh, oh i got to take yeah. a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah and sometimes, sometimes you got to take a break, right? Uh, sometimes you got to. Are you um, or you're sitting there and you're watching a video and it seems like your eyeballs are crossing. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how it was. That's how it was when I was watching the the video for whenever I was at the Knapp house and I was in that room with, when I caught the thermal, the hand on the thermal. It was the same thing. I was watching because the thermal didn't have audio on it. So it was just the videos. So I'm watching hours and hours of this, right? And I'm, I'm just seeing, I'm going to the portion where, you know, I freaked out and I'm moving the camera and then I'm slowing the rates down. And then whenever I saw that, that was kind of like a holy hell moment right there. And <laughs> it, it made for all those hours that I was spending, that was the pinnacle part of it where I was just, I was amazed. And again, why I do what I do. It's four moments like that. 
So is is the show um, able to um, to give you the income that you need to you know to live off of? Because I know a lot of the shows when they first start, it's very low paying. Because um, I actually did a pilot one time, and I know these it's they get you, give you minimum wage. Do you, is there something else well, you do in life? Or well, well, yeah, I'm. I'm in management. That's what I do for for um, my main income. I, I can't speak on the pay portion too much. I can say that um, the network travel travels. They've always been great with us, and uh, I can't say much more than that. But yeah, I can't discuss the details in that. But I can say that they they treat us right. They treat us right, and they throughout the whole process of filming and everything, they've just been absolutely amazing with allowing us to do our thing. Because, you know, I know there's some production companies, some networks out there that, you know, it's kind of stricter guidelines and things like that. They've been really great with allowing us to try things in our cases, in our investigations, and they kind of give us that create creative um go ahead to be able to do things so they've been really fantastic uh, i think the travel course. channel's good marketing the shows with the whole ghost tober thing and the ad campaign it's like they actually push the shows they don't hide them like at 3 a.m and act like they don't exist yeah they they are very supportive across the board with all of the shows that are going on they they do their best to to let the world know you know as much as possible let the world know what's out there and what's coming up and they've just been great i can't say um enough good things about them they've been great um but yeah as a day job i'm 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 in management been in management um on the tech side of things too been in management for about 16 years so oh wow well, right now, all I do is uh, help the ratings on television. <laughs> hey, hey, we appreciate that. <laughs> we appreciate that. I've, I've gone through the second season or the uh, second uh, whole seasons of uh, The Office. So, yeah. Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> I love it. So maybe I'm helping the ratings too. Man. Well, In see. Between. I would watch all the ghost shows during the day, but my wife would shoot me if I didn't wait for her to get home. So. Gotcha. <laughs> so I we, know how that is. I know how that is. Yep. You, if the wife ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Nobody's happy. You were right about that. <laughs> well, believe you it or right. not, believe it or not, an hour has gone by. I can't wow. believe it. It's, it has flown by. It has flown by. So, um... Tell us how people can follow you on social media and a little bit more about Travel Channel, their schedule for y'all, and so everybody knows. Okay. So on Facebook, you can find me. Just type in Shane Pittman. You can find me there. Or at Starring Shane on Twitter and Instagram, at Starring Shane. It's Y'all don't make fun of me for that. It's just something that I had for years and that just <laughs> can't. Um, Travel Channel, like I said, Ghosttober ends October 31st on Halloween. We will not have a new episode of The Hoser Files this Thursday. It will be an encore episode at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So there's going to be a special going on this Thursday, a Halloween special with Ghost Adventures from 9 to 11 Eastern. At 11 o'clock, that's when our encore episode of The Holzer Files plays. Then the following Thursday on November 7th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have an all-new episode of The Holzer Files. And every Thursday after that until, I believe, December... Second or ninth, something like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, you can also you can also uh, follow the Holzer Files on Facebook and on Twitter and on Instagram. 
Well, we will be reposting this episode on our social media, and I I will be definitely sending you the link as soon as uh, the show's over. Awesome, and, awesome. And so yeah, definitely share that, and um, okay. you know we um, we definitely will support y'all if anything special is coming up. Y'all like us to advertise on our social media? Shoot it to me. I'll be glad to do it. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate y'all uh, providing the platform where we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, you <laughs> guys you. have been great. You guys have been awesome. I appreciate it very much. And the people in the chat room, too, uh, all the questions, great questions. Uh, I appreciate you guys, too. Thank you for me. Thank you for joining us on Into the Pit. Please follow us on Facebook at the Vibes Broadcast Network and Instagram at the Vibes Broadcast.